Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara, and today we are discussing our June fantasy series title. If you would like to see this in video format without the commercials, you'll need to head on over to Patreon and sign up. And of course, don't forget, you can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more bookish chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is my special guest co-host and sister, Smile. Welcome back, Smile. What's up? <laughs> Glad you're able to join me again for this new duology. I'm here for it, baby. Yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> so before we get started, of course, I just want to remind you that as always with Book Chats, we talk full spoilers here. So you've been warned. So today we are discussing the book, The Serpent and the Wings of Night, book one in the crowns of Na- Naxia. Na- Na- Naxia. Naxia. Nyaxia, there we go. <laughs> Written by Carissa Broadbent. Now look here, I'm gonna be saying names wrong this whole episode. It was just a tough accepted. One. It was tough. It was tough. And this is so as I'm gonna give you the rest of the stats and then we'll get into it. So this was published on August 30th, 2022. It was a self-published title. From what I could find, I could not find a publisher anywhere. So I'm assuming it's self-published. The Kindle book came in at 532 pages. And guess what? There is no audiobook. Not yet. Not yet. I, I found out that it's gonna be released August 15th. So if you're listening after August 15th, go head on over if you're an audiobook listener. If you're listening before, sorry, you have to wait. You got to read it. <laughs> I know you got to read it. And I personally, um, real fast, I was like, oh, no, no audio. That makes me sad with fantasy <laughs> because it helps me with the names. It does. It helps a lot with the names, but um, it helps me to continue reading through my daily task, too. So, you yes. know, no matter what I'm doing, I can definitely get it in. So it helps a lot. But this time, baby. <laughs> look, look, we were th- old school. We had to read it. We had to. Read this was a solid go hard <laughs> for two days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so before we jump into it, Smile, would you please kindly share the synopsis? Absolutely. For humans and vampires, the rules of survival are the same. Never trust, never yield, and always, always guard your heart. The adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Aurea carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kajari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be easy amongst most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Aurea is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown, and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Oriah most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. But there's no room for compassion in the Kajari. War for the House of Night brews, shattering everything that Oriah thought she knew about her home. And Rain may understand her more than anyone. But their blossoming attraction could be her downfall in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. The Serpent and the Wings of Night is the first book in a new series of heart-wrenching romance, dark magic, and bloodthirsty intrigue. Perfect for fans of From Blood and Ash and A Court of Thorns and Roses. Have mercy. Okay, so look, (laughs) those two books are... We've talked about Sarah J. Mass lots of times, Court and Thorns and Roses. We that is like the quintessential reference that every one of B fantasy book lines themselves up with. I guess I really need to read it then, huh? It's good, but again, <laughs> book one, and eh, um, I, that's my disclaimer. Um, and the other series is by Jennifer L. Armand Trout, and she is also a really big name in this genre. And I have read lots of her in the past, but the one that they mentioned in this synopsis, I stopped reading it. I couldn't get into it. So, oh, but these are the two like pretty much staples in this quote unquote dark fantasy yeah. type genre. Yeah, maybe I should read the staples. <laughs> newbie here newbie here yeah but um this was not 
completely like one-to-one to those books because me personally with like the trials and stuff, it kind of had a little bit of essence of like a little bit of Hunger Games in Games? there. That's what it yes. gave me, Hunger Games all day, baby. It was mm-hmm. Vampire Hunger Games. I loved it. Yes, I loved it too. I really this did. It was a really good read. It was so easy. Like I said, it was a two-dayer for me. So it was, I just kept going and going and going. It was real easy. It took me about a week, but let me just say, because, you know, I work all day, so I couldn't even sit out and read it. When I get home, I'm like, let me read this book. But wait a minute, I have other things to do. <laughs> and that's where we, like we mentioned, we get spoiled with the audiobooks. So I was hemming and hawing for most of the week, and I really didn't get down to business until Friday. So I literally, in the last two days, I read like 70% of the book in two days. Well, I'll tell you this. Initially, I started, when we first decided this was the book we were going to read, I read like the first, um, the first six chapters, like, head on. It was wonderful. And I was like, I can't keep going like this because I'm not going to know what to talk about in in two weeks, like, or three (laughs) weeks. I think we said it like three weeks ago. So Uh I was like, let me calm down. I did some other reading in between. And then I was like, oh no, it's this weekend. Let me read this book. And so I got to read and I didn't realize I only read six chapters. Like, four percent of the book or less <laughs> you're like it's only four percent no <laughs> <laughs> so what i tell you I, I was supposed to read it friday friday i was hemming and hawing and bsing around and i looked up and the day was gone and i was like uh i woke up, <laughs> up early on saturday and i was like <laughs> The cheer rinse, you got to find something to eat because mama's out of commission. I got to (laughs) read. I have to read this book. (laughs) Fend for yourself. (laughs) That's how that went down. (laughs) Oh, that is hilarious. Oh, well, we had a similar experience then at the end because I did text you like, um, you could be ready. (laughs) I was like, yeah, I got some reading sprints. I didn't read nothing that day. So I legit woke up this morning. I finished it like an hour ago. (laughs) Okay. So I went to the gym this morning. So I woke up at like six and I finished the last 15%. I was done by eight o'clock. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. And I'm like, let me, and I was kind of slow reading. I wasn't even like hardcore reading. I'm like, oh, it's only 15% left. I I can just knock it out. I was hardcore (laughs) speed reading, pumping, pumping. (laughs) And then I had to hit the brakes like, what? (laughs) <laughs> Let me mm-hmm. rewind that. Like, wait, how did we get here? <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. I had to go back a little bit too when I was trying to figure out what the hell was the plan that Rain was doing. I'm like, wait a I minute. Know, it was so tough. Oh, okay. So since we both finished this morning, it's fresh in our emotions. How did you feel when you finished? The oh book? my goodness. I was like, what? in the world is going on here what in the vampire craziness is going on here it what what is she like that <laughs> what are you i feel like um i questioned that all the way through the book but finishing the book was like oh i gotta move to the next one i gotta go i gotta do this i know i wanted to start immediately too but my initial reaction right after that last sentence, I was like, that's some bullshit. I was like, that's some bullshit because, okay, so look, let me just tell you why that was my reaction. So initially, you know, they're going through this thing and one of them had to live and one of them had to die. We knew. We knew that. The whole time. And she was committed. Right. And at the, okay, so they got to the point and I'm like, okay, she going to do it. Is the author going to have the nerve to kill him? And then she did it. And I was like, oh, fuck no. This is that kind of book. She is going to wish him back. And what did she do? Wish him to win, which brought him back. I'm like, God I knew she it. was going to. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that I didn't jump to she was going to wish him back. But I was like, yo, this, she can't like, this, she wanted her man. Like, why? She wanted her man. You get one thing from from. The God, right? The goddess. You get one thing. And I said, she going to waste it on him. Watch. And she She had to keep that strong arm. (laughs) And then what does, and and you know, the queen, the the goddess woman tells her the best love are the ones that are gone, basically. 
Well, what did she say? She, she said, said um, "Did I even highlight that? Probably. The dead can't cause the dead can't hurt you. The lo- lo- the dead loves can't hurt you, or something." Yeah, yeah, I highlighted that. Yeah, <laughs> it's in there. I was like, "Dang, uh, dude, she she's she, real. Look, she is raw. That is serious foreshadowing to what is promptly about to happen, pretty much immediately." And then, but well, when she said that, I was like, "Girl, like, just get over it. Take your crown. Like, you need to take control of everything, honey. Like." Just just do it just do it do it do it and she was like i wish i know <laughs> i'm like that is the wrong thing to do because i know <sighs> uh, it totally followed the trope right it followed the trope i'm like okay this is their love story they're gonna be together but now that they're together in this way that is awful is that they're gonna have to figure this out or because I can't believe that the author would then try to turn around and have her kill him after all of this. So that was going to be a hard thing. Like, <sighs> I just feel like, <laughs> yeah, that was disappointing, but I, I guess bad. it made for juice. It made for juice for later, you know? Yeah. Look, I felt bad, but when she fucking like her father dies, she doesn't even know this dude is her real father until after the fact she gets. Oh, he was like, I was gonna tell yes. you. Yes, I'm like, like mother. Yo, so she's no, you half. Wasn't. She's half vampire. Oh, trite like old ass girl, <laughs> like, crusty ass vampire. He was trying to manipulate <laughs> her, which is true, and it backfired. And it's crazy, yeah. Because I mean, I had to look up because they kept on um, talking about the cortisone. Is that how you say it? Cortisone, cortisone. Girl, I don't know cortisone. what you're trying to say. <laughs> The bond oh. <laughs> that he was trying to get her to do. <laughs> Victor was trying to get her to bond to him. Yes. So she would be his court of saint. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, basically, he would get power from her, but he would, oh, she and, would get power from him. And they live forever. Him. Yeah. But they live forever. Yeah. And, um, like, they could po- potentially live forever. But if one dies, the other dies, too. Mm-hmm. I thought that was, I was like, girl, you need to bond with your man. Like... <laughs> Bond with your man. <sighs> Don't bond with your daddy. Oh my Ew. god! I would not bond to a parent. Who? What parent would want to bond to their live, child like that? I don't want to live with my daddy forever. No, I mean, but would you want your kid to die if you died? No. So who? Will, you supposed to die before your kid? Yeah, like so. I just think he was trying to jump the line. He just wanted to be reign forever and ever. Like he wanted to be a god, but he was a vampire, so he can be a god. I mean, he tried. He was really close, right? He was really close to what he wanted. Oh, he was so close until she got she got digmatized. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, now they had like sex all night before that. No, last- listen, <laughs> listen. Let's talk about when the juiciness comes. Okay, so usually the pace of the book it be ragging the crap out of me, like it be ragging, but. In this particular case, I was highly entertained the entire time and I really didn't miss no booty scene. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't miss it. It was fine with me. They could have kept going as platonic friends and I would have been like, yes, team. I'm for it. Yes, team. But they were never platonic. They were always flirty. The banter was flirty. How many men I don't flirt with? I don't care. I be flirting with everybody. (laughs) (laughs) What's that? (laughs) If you haven't read the book, she made the choice, as we said, to save her boyfriend to the detriment of her own life, her own self. Her father is killed. The power is taken back. So her father, he won the trials. He won the power and then proceeded to like off all the Rishon people, right? Like he tried to take out everybody that could have been an heir to that community, right? So he is Hilaj, I guess, is what he is so hijari hijari yeah or he it says each each his hilage or regime he he are born two marks so I, I don't know these names okay anyway <laughs> so <laughs> what happens is after you know rain gets the power he he asked the goddess to get back all of the power that was stolen. So he instantly becomes hella powerful and he just jets off to kill her daddy. And then after that, he's like, <laughs> He didn't even jet off. He did it like right there. He like, did right immediately. <laughs> dead. You done, fun. <laughs> One and done. 
pile of flesh. I mean, ash and bones. He and did mush. it right in front of her. He didn't care. No, nah, he was a savage, but he's always been a savage, so. Yes, which is true to him, although he was trying to be just like her daddy. They both did that. They're both really brutal people, but it seemed like when it came to her specifically, they kind of softened, but not all the way. They're still brutal people. Um, because yeah. Because after that, he tells his people, they're like, kill her! She's got the mark! Kill her! And he's like, wait, wait, I can torture her instead. This is what we'll do. I could torture her by making her marry me. Listen, I feel like that was one of that one of the things he said it later. He said, I said what I had to say to save your life or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I was like, bruh, like, did you have to be that brutal? Like, I'm not convinced that you're well, not gonna be running around here raping people. Look, okay. <laughs> so Araya got her shots back at him because later you know, they're getting, after they got married, he's in the room. She's like, oh, you don't think you get, you're going to get in the married bed. We're not doing that. <laughs> not he's just like, am I going to make it easy for you to rape me? He's like, oh my God. I didn't mean it like that, basically. <laughs> but she like, I don't care. Give a fuck. <laughs> <She's> like, no. <laughs> we done. That, that life I'm is done. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That was really, really strange. And like the, but I feel like the whole time getting there, I, I feel like the ending was anticlimactic. I wanted like more there, but I can see where we have to wait for more. Yeah. We got to wait for it. Because but, now it's going to be strategic, right? So it was very, pretty strategic. But it was calculated the whole it, time. It was like they're, they're pairing up, you know, as teammates was totally like means to an end for both of them. Although Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he did the whole book lies of omission. Really? He didn't outwardly lie to her, but he didn't say either. He was great at keeping secrets. He was like a million years old. Oh, I know. He's very old. He done kept secrets for a long time with his vampire earth. I don't know why she thought he was going to be honest with her. She knew she couldn't trust him. She kept saying it the whole time. (laughs) She kept saying yeah. it. She knew. She, in her gut of guts. She she didn't know in her gut. And I feel like that's kind of why um, she was trying to withhold secrets from him. But she, she failed. Every single corner she failed. It was like, girl, I can't. She was in her mind. I can't tell him that my plan is to take over the world. And she's like, oh, I'm just going to take over the world, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I... She, okay, I just, I don't know. She had, listen, when it came to, when it came to, um, to rain, she, she just was emotion vomit everywhere. It was just emotion vomit. I yeah. just like, <laughs> and you know what though, to be fair, she was at a complete loss. She had a deficit when it came a huge to deficit. those type of relationships and stuff. So it was easier for him to manipulate her because she has such a deficit in that area. And he figured that out early that she, number one, she didn't know everything that she needed to know. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, she really can't find out now because she's away from her father. She's stuck in this house in the moon palace with everyone else. And now we're here fighting for our lives. So there's no time for her to find out. Mm-hmm. That was um, that sucked because I just feel like if Victor would have told her, like, "Hey, look," he mentioned it. He said, "Well, if there's an heir, you know." But I feel like she should have paid more attention to his markings because she did see them she quite a few it. times, and she just kind of went over that. You know, the wood was calling her name. Well, look, and he said. <laughs> Which was true. So he did, like he said, he didn't lie. He did. He was a slave, basically. He was turned by a king. He shouldn't have been an heir. People didn't think that could happen, but he was. But it did. Yeah. And it happened to her, too. Mm-hmm. Because she was But not, she's half, though. She's half. So, oh, they didn't say anything about halves. They just said bloodline so that's still bloodline well at the end they kind of said they were trying to figure out what victor like what was he scared of like why would he take you in how did he find you did he just show up at your house like out of everyone no i think he knew 
I think he knew that he that she was his yeah, heir. That's why he came. And he for was her. like, I'm. I gotta. I gotta protect this, and you know, teach this yeah. how to live because we gotta carry on forever and ever. But that's the point. Right? If he knew that he made a horrific error in judgment, he should have told her, her the whole time, "I'm your father for real," and this is what we have to protect because she would have a different point of view that whole time she would have been protecting what's hers not what's his definitely wouldn't have she definitely wouldn't lay with the enemy no she she would not have have laid with him if she would have known that she was the heir to the throne no and she would have been way more cognizant of all the political things that was happening amongst the villages and things like that uh, or the houses she would have been way more aware of that i think she would have played her cards more strategic I mean, instead of being wild, wild and out so with it. Even the father, Vincent, in my opinion, missed his second opportunity. Okay, so he didn't tell the truth of me from the beginning. Fine, but after the Moon Castle got caught on fire with the the wildfire stuff, and like they took all of the, you know, what do they call them themselves, the the Rashan away after they took all of them away and tortured them. And she's like, mm-hmm. hey, don't torture my friend. <laughs> We're allies. He could have told that her this. It's time to tell her the truth. And he he held his tongue, child. That man was the most tongue tied some of them I don't ever seen. Mm-hmm. It didn't make no sense whatsoever. No. But you know, and that's those kind of things makes me wonder if this author is a plotter or a pantser. You've heard of that term, right? No. So a plotter means Newbie. like <laughs> what's a panther. So a panther is you fly by the seat of your pants. You're not plotting the story out. So I wonder. I think she was a plotter in this book, but I think she might have to be a panther next book well, because I don't know. I mean, sometimes people actually think that far out because for him to be so stupid. I mean, I guess maybe just by design, like to make it work the way she wants it to work is why he made that horrible choice. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that he wanted to live forever. I think there's another secret he was trying to take to the grave, but she might unearth after he, you know, because he's dead. So I feel like Oriah might unearth another secret into her past and Victor's past and kind of tells how or why he kept that a secret or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that might be another plot twist. Mm. Maybe. Or it could just be the end of that story. And now to, you know, on to bigger, better things, Mr. Wood. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, That was a mess. Honestly, like now you stuck with this guy. I'd be trying to murder him every day. Oh, Stuck. Oh my gosh, she's stuck. And then, like, okay, so this is the crazy part. So Jessamine, oh, who was yeah, 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 yeah. Her, her father's like first in command, you know, she really hated that woman. She thought, I don't know what she thought, but she didn't trust her. She didn't like her. And she was loyal to the crown, which is how most people who serve in that capacity, they're not necessarily loyal to the person, but they're loyal to the crown. So she was loyal to her father. And now that her father is gone, She's loyal to Araya. Yes. I think, but I did like that in my little book notes. I was like, yes, Jasmine came in clutch. She's going to be the wild card. She's the wild card. She just got to keep that secret. Yes. And hopefully she will keep her effing mouth shut. Oh my goodness. And you know, (laughs) and Jasmine told her, she's like, look, like she was, I know she was fighting not to call her a stupid little girl, but she like, look, (laughs) honey, you are locked in that room with spells on this window. <laughs> you are a prisoner in there. He wants you, you to are be a prisoner. prisoner. Mm-hmm. Like the locks you're are not on a the prisoner. outside. You're a queen. You're a queen. Yeah. Act like it. Step up, girl. Yeah. We're going to wait for her to put on her big girl panties next book. Yes, I feel it. I she feel better because that's going to be wackadocious if she just starts working with him. And like, oh look, that's the way I came up. Whack. That shit was whack. And I had to throw it back to 96 with wackadocious. Not just whack. Yes. It's wackadocious. Yes. <laughs> it's because I'm like, how you gonna work with him? Well, I kind of think she has to. I she mean, has to now. She has to now. She's yeah. stuck. Like, she's 100% stuck. She just has to keep his mind, like, in the game with her. Because if he veers off because of... um 
what's the guy's name? Um, oh, that Simit- guy with Simit- the Simit- yeah, Simit- the M name who was uh, betting on her and stuff. What is his name? Se- Simit- Septimus. 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 Yeah, Septimus. There we go. Simit- I'm looking at the spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Optimus with F- uh, SEP. <laughs> yeah, Septimus. So as long as he keeps um, Brain's mind in line with her and not veering off to Septimus's goal or whatever, I feel like they might be able to forge this new um what do they call it nation era whatever whatever i guess but i just hate that okay well he wasn't he wasn't loyal to their crown no he he was not he had his own game so there's still something we don't know about him like what's his long Mm -hmm. game right like he ultimately said to her at the end like hey I know what I'm doing. He's like, he basically said he just counted on her saving him or counted on them being together. He has a longer game than than she can tell. I mean, he old is he older than dirt. What you mean, long game? He's been in this long game for a long time. Yeah. So I mean, what he sees, what he says is not true, I don't think. Like you can't take him at face value at all. Um, I wouldn't, and I yeah. feel like that's why she got to stay in his head, but she can't, she can't allow him to be in her head. But that's, that's what she's going to struggle with. She is, she's I can tell from this book, she's not good at separation, separating the two things. Like she's not going to be able to present one way and have a different plan in the background. She's just not going to be able to pull it off. Correct. But can we talk about how strong this little chick is? Yeah. Like, I love that. Little, little. You mean physically chick strong? With the daggers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, for her size and her expectations being um, half human and everything, mm-hmm. I was like, yes, girl, get it, get it, get it. Dagger here. Da, 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 da. She was she a killer. Keep it up. And I love that. She is a killer. That is one thing Victor was good for. Mm-hmm. Victor did raise a he raised the freaking killer of all freaking she she gonna run them houses i don't care what nobody say she better she better like she better all them all that daggering and and taking time to look they gonna try okay they're gonna real rule together because if we follow the the tropes of this type of thing they're going to rule together, but it's the road to getting there. That's going to make this either exciting in part two or black in part two. You know, what be, what would be real exciting is if yes, they got it together and they rule together and they reign and things like that. But then one day she gets sick of them and then <laughs> she poisoned his tea. I mean, his blood, his cup of blood like here, honey. <laughs> oh my God. So speaking of blood, let me just say the entire time after they went into the fourth round, I think it was where they were starving each other. They were being starved. I said, how he long before she gave up that blood? Cause she is gonna give him her blood. I knew the whole time I was just waiting. I knew she would. Mm-hmm. I knew she would. There was no doubt. She was trying to give him her blood for a minute. Talking about, Oh, he's, he's on my neck. <laughs> He's so close to my neck. <laughs> I laid my head down on his neck. Oh, my God. I was so close. I could feel his breath on my ear. Look, this character, Rain, was really trying his hardest to get her to trust him. He was trying so hard to keep. He keeps reiterating that she's safe. She's in control. But she's not. Like, I listen, that was like some of the best programming mind control a vampire has ever done in my opinion you are safe wait 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 <laughs> you getting the character <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 you are safe was that good <laughs> it was okay you're no audiobook narrator stay in your lane but <laughs> wait 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 you're safe here. <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know if that's any no, better. I'm but that is what he kept doing. He kept trying to. It was like a mind game almost. He was playing on it her. It was. It was the hypnotic. Yeah. It was perfect. Like, 
Like that really played in his favor because she would say, oh, I can hear his voice. You are safe. Mm-hmm. I'm like, girl, can you please in listen your head. to the hairs on your neck? Mm-hmm. The hairs of your chinny chin chin, honey. <sighs> but listen, she, she's so impressionable. Like, I mean, okay, so I understand her under hearing, you know, Vincent, right? Because he's trained her for over he's a been in her ear for a long all her life. Yeah, basically, she was like, how old was she? Like six or seven or something? All her formidable she, years, yeah. he was in her ear. Yeah, so, so it was all through her development. She was real young when he found her. Um, I think it was like six or seven or something. She was old enough to know what's going on and be leery of him, but it's young enough to really just take to whatever he was saying. I don't think she was that old. I think she was younger than that. I think she was younger than that because, um, I don't know. I guess that just that scene where she was, you know, seeing what was going on and he came for her. It just gave me like, oh, well, vampires are big. So she could have been like five. No, because I mean, a five year old would have been more mouthy, right? A five year old. She was she was like mute for a long time and stayed in that corner well, hiding weeks. from him. It took weeks, apparently. So let's see. The little girl did not speak for days. King of the okay. House of Night gave her room a room next to his. Blah blah blah. Um. So a week passed, another and another. And at last, when the moon was full in the sky, the child um, fighting hunger pains crept up, blah, blah, blah. So it looks like it took about it like a, a month, month for her to talk to him. So maybe it wasn't that long. Yeah. Maybe I was just traumatizing things in my head. And he also <laughs> said like a, a thing, you know, he said to her, you're not safe. Not in this castle. You're never not safe. Not in this you're room. You're never safe here. You are no. prey. In a mm-hmm. world of predators. He told her from the very beginning. Yeah. But he did yeah, say, I will never hurt you following that, though. He raised a true freaking murderer. Like, she's like a crime murderer. Push hard. Push. <clears throat> Do all the layers. Crack, crack, crack. Mm. Well, that's what's needed. You can't, you, you, you can't be weak trying to break through someone's uh, rib cage. <laughs> You don't have enough time. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. If anybody is strong enough to break through a rib cage, like we don't need no more surgeons, baby. We don't need no more. Well, look, that's why it's fiction. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't think the average person can just like put a, a, a knife through someone's rib cage like that. No, it don't. it's going to break the knife. But I do like that about her character. I think that's what drew me in. So like it really made me immerse myself in this book, just knowing that she was so strong. Like I love that for her, for real. I love that you for don't me. See that. Um, I love that for me. Let me. Okay, y'all look, we, we got to take a quick break before we continue. We'll take a really quick commercial break by listening to those commercials. You are supporting the podcast. So please do. And while you're at it, Go ahead over to Amazon and check out the book review journal. Stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction merch store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs. Perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right. Welcome back, guys. So I am like you in that this was good for me that she was so strong because I love a strong female lead. There is nothing worse to me than a crybaby. Can't don't get your life together kind of person. I cannot stand it. (laughs) Oh, that just grinds my gears. Just it, it does. But I loved it. I love that she was willing to stand her ground like, you going to get some of this. 
try me if you want to. Yeah. I like that for real. Yeah. And I also liked, even though she was strong, she had her flaws, which was needed for character development, right? It was needed for the plot to progress the way the author wanted it to. So she wasn't perfect by any means, but she was strong enough that the things that she wasn't doing correctly didn't like great over great me. (laughs) Like it didn't overturn everything she was working for. Exactly. So, she was able to grow, move forward, move on and learn in the, you know, in the same heartbeat. Like that was beautiful to me. Until she that. said, save my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> she gave one night a, a piece after piece after piece and can't stop thinking about pieces. I'm like, girl, you want to save your energy. You got to fight tomorrow. You appear to having sex all night, girl. But she, but that's, you know, you know, vampires, they, they, they have that in them. Like they're willing to go all the time, anywhere, whatever. Which is maybe why she was able to, because she's half. She has some of that in her where she's able mm, to. That's where that drop. Yeah. And you know what? There was times where she had got some of his blood in her mouth and she wasn't like, she was like, that wasn't gross. She was like, hmm, it tastes like iron. <laughs> and something else and something else and something else yeah oh but you know what got me i knew she was gonna fall in love with him i knew it when she was like when she was describing what he smelled like yeah. when she described him as smelling like saffron and something else that she got me as saffron i was like oh girl that's gonna be your man because <laughs> <laughs> oh i was getting whiffs like i love i love you know that's a good scent that's one of my faves but that that description baby i was like ooh ooh she going to get them draws up <laughs> she going to do it she going to do it but you know actually i kind of also appreciate a kind of story where we have a central couple and they just have to work through the all the things all the hurdles i hate a freaking love triangle more than anything i appreciate this type of setup way more yeah, um, the love triangles get tiresome. You know, it just makes you want to just, it gets tiresome. Like everything is not a triangle. Like sometimes you you know the person that you like and sometimes you just want that person. Like that's my person. Mm-hmm. I want that. And I love that they honed in on um, that idea instead of the triangle. Like, please. <laughs> Yeah. No third wheels here, please. I know. Because even in Hunger Games, there was kind of a triangle, right? Even though yeah, her and yeah. Peter were in the ring together. But it, it could have went without it. Yeah, it like could've. for me, it could have. I could have went without that for me. Like it was just. Yeah. Mm. So in this case, it worked really well. Although, you know, again, we have that same trope of someone really young with someone very, very old. And I feel like, again, mentally, that allows the man to run circles around her because she hasn't had the experience level yet. And he old as tarnation, like hundreds of years old. (laughs) They be killing me going for these young little, like, why why can't you find a grown woman to go after? Because, like, think about it. Rain is at least 200 years old, at least. Yep. Because he was tortured. He was a prisoner for like 70 years after he was turned. I'm trying to think of, I feel like Rain is older than that. I don't mm. know. That's why I said Two, at least. 300 years, something like that. I don't know. Two, three. Mm. And after you've been around that long, she he's been married. He's had children. They've gone, you know, that's a long time to mature <laughs> And here's this girl. I mean, she's essentially a girl. How old is she in this book? Is she like 23 or 24? I can't even remember her age. I feel like it was told to us at one point. I feel like she um, remembered back to when she was 17 or something like that. So, um, and before then it was like um, 16 or something like that. I feel like they dropped a couple numbers at a few different times but she was definitely i I don't want to give her no more than like 20 max oh so you don't even think she's over 30 no no here it is page 
five percent in. I was twenty three. He was still lecturing oh. me that way. So this is when. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But she was older than that. So twenty three. So even twenty three to two hundred and twenty three. Let's say, for example, that's still outrageous. That's still nothing. No. Still nothing. So she's got a lot to learn really fast to deal with him in a fair way, which you know, again, it always makes it unfair for the the females in these situation because they always they always get played like they the men think they're doing such a good thing they think they're being honorable they think they're doing the best and they're really manipulating so yeah i don't know so yeah, that part um, about rain i don't love but i want to like him you know what shocked me about araya is when she was actually going through the trials and um like i love that she found a good friendship in mish mish mm-hmm. Misha, mish i love that she found that friendship because she saw the human in her she was very um human characteristic or whatever but speaking of age what really shocked me is when she went and she gave the old ministero girl ministero, a little sippy sippy tasty girl thing. like I, ew I like she too. went and traded and she never did tell rain he asked her about her mm-hmm. bandage but she went and traded some sips of blood so that her friend would be released out of the trial like out of the and I was competition like, i hope she come back and i i hope mish comes back and she's like like another um like another card in the bag like one See, another joker this is my thing like, with mish i think she's throw a, up a wild card i think she's a great character and i think she is a friend to araya but she is a better mm-hmm. friend to rain they've known each other for a very very long time yeah that's natural yeah but like, if, if it came to a situation friend. where she had to choose she would not choose araya's side she would choose rain's side I don't know, because Araya did save a life. She, she did, was, but she she'll was, know that. She'll know what she did. I don't know. I feel like she could be another wild card. But I like that relationship. That made me giggle, too. Just thinking about her. It, it was one time in there where she was like, I was trying not to um, imagine Mish as uh, the girl who would giggle at the any sound that sounds like flatulence in the room. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> that tickled me. I was like, dang, she was really seeing the human the human in this girl. Like, and I love that she was so bubbly. You don't see that in vampires. You don't see that. Well, you know, the author went out of her way to make Mish and Rain obviously different from the rest, which is they one of the things that attracted, you know, Araya to him. It's like when they went yeah. to that bar, they went to that CD human bar, and yeah. she said, Oh, he blend right in. <laughs> He's <laughs> like shuffling it a little bit, you know, <laughs> shoulders got a little, a little hunch, hunch you know, hunch. so they both had human characteristics. They, cause they were both turned, both of them were turned, not born. Correct. Correct. I, I just like that. I like that um, interaction between them. I had to mention it because I was loving it. I was like, yes, me, yes. We'll see her again. I know we will. And if she got to come back. If we see her in the capacity I'd like, I'd like to be seeing her read the riot act to rain for what happened. Like, I would love mm-hmm. her to go in on him like, dude, you fucked up. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something, yeah. buddy, yo, pal. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I feel like she can definitely read him better than anyone else in that scenario because he really values her opinion, her um, her thought processes. Like, like you said, they have been together for centuries. At least one I century, at least one. Forever in a day, yeah. let's just say that. Yeah, a long time. So he values her opinion, which is going to be helpful to Araya later. I think it will be helpful, but... Yeah, it was a cute relationship, but I'm glad she got out without dying because that would have been like, oh, my God, don't kill that woman. <laughs> that would have been so sad. Yeah. I, come, I was seeing it coming, too. I was like, don't die. Don't die. Hold on. Yeah. And she just gerbling away. <laughs> I know, because she could not, like, she had the power of fire, regular fire, which is a different power than 
nightborn, you know, or vampire should have access to. And, and she lost it. She lost it, which is how she got so effed up. She was trying to reach yeah. out and uh, her God would not give her or goddess, whoever she got that power from. I couldn't remember if it was a God or goddess. It was one of the gods. Would not. Austerous. Yeah, or, they were or, holding uh, tight like net. Yeah taps off like no bitch you've done sorry yes we don't see how long you last now it was not very Ding. long not very long that was the wrath of the gods they work when they want to they you know Ding. yeah everyone's a toy for them that Basically. was the whole premise we're all toys for them yeah it was pretty treacherous um but then like on the flip side I wish we could get more information on it. We might get more information on um, Araya's access to night fi- flower, a uh, flower, fire, night fire. <laughs> um, because like at certain times, it's able to just like erupt from her in this uh, obscenely hour, you know, ah, fire, Disaster. burn, everything. It was <laughs> when she boiled over. Mm-hmm. That boiled over emotion that was too overwhelming for her. That was when it just... Wow. It erupted like when she was on the brink of death in the uh in the rink in the trials just bah, well I'm she'd be alive. fighting sometimes as well and then it would be like little sparks at her fingers like it ain't doing nothing it wasn't enough for her <laughs> yeah it wasn't it and that's something else rain was trying to tell her he was like you gotta use you use that anger use that hurt use that fear use it but she was so guarded what was that um Fear is nothing but a series of, oh my goodness, what was that? A series of responses or something like that. And um, and fear she is was just, just a collection of physical responses. Yeah, yeah. She mm-hmm. was hiding behind it instead of really honing in. Like, oh, she had to suck it in and then push it out, and then she would be able to use her night fire night shade whatever night whatever. fire. I guess because yeah. they had fire and then I night fire. Was, I think the night fire was brutal. Like, like the it way just they burned you from the it. inside. Like the yeah. whole thing. It's just, just it wasn't mm-hmm. hot. It wasn't cold. It was just whew. that reminds <laughs> me of like um in Game of Thrones when they had that wildfire that was green. It just like, do you remember that? Like it just took everything. It out. Yeah. Everything. Just, yeah. Like that. Yeah. And but I thought that was I think she's gonna get to a point where she hones in and she's gonna learn to master. She better learn how to master it. But I like I need that for her. Look, I I'm, need that. I'm gonna need like I know Rain knows she's strong. He's seen it, right? He knows she's mm-hmm. powerful. He knows what she can do. But I'm gonna need him to walk around on tippy toes. Like she might actually kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna need well, that. <laughs> I, listen, I feel like with her, um. Honing in on her power and really learning how to use it, which she really got to focus on mm-hmm. and do. I feel like when she does that, and then with Jasmine in the backdrop, making stuff work on the outside that Rain doesn't know about, mm-hmm. then I feel like he will be at that precipice where he's got to say, hold on, let me back up. Like, wait a minute. Like, I might be big, but this bitch will kill me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he also kind of thinks that if she has it in there to kill him it's in there but she really likes me so she won't you know what i mean so like he i think he kind of thinks that he's the exception to the rule and she won't really kill him like even at the very end you know they had that little comment you know he's like are you gonna kill me today and she's like not today not today but uh, not today no but, but she did that she did that before the i know um uh, the fourth time before the fourth trial or no it was before the last one and um she was like oh, i'm not gonna kill you today no it was in between one of those where she um she was basically choosing to work with him right. still instead of just dropping him at the side or whatever right. so so even that at the end, when they said that, that was to me more a callback to that. It wasn't actually a threat, you know. It was a callback yeah. to them it's deciding to work together, right? Deciding yeah. to, although I think it needed to be a threat. <laughs> he need to feel a threat, but he doesn't feel it because, you know, they're flirting still. 
I hope they get past their um, animosity. No, and there is none on his side. He think it's fine. Inbred issues. No. <laughs> yeah, their family lines and trauma. Like, they need a good therapist. Girl. <laughs> so, so one of the, the little things right before the end, she says, my friend, my enemy, my lover, my captor. Right. So this just tells me all the things I need to know. She's soft. She's soft about him. And I don't know what it's going to take for her to harden up. I don't know. She going to stay soft for him. (laughs) She living a soft life under his big old wings. Can you imagine that scene? (laughs) She's like, and just like the nights, I didn't pull away from his touch. Instead, I tr- pressed my palm flat to his chest. Behind him, my kingdom burned. I thought, maybe, not tonight, I said. Not tonight. Bitch, your whole f- life is on fire. <laughs> you like, okay, honey, I won't kill you tonight. Okay. You know, them big old man titties in her face. <laughs> <laughs> she got to pay some attention to him. <laughs> But a little horny self can't get past but it. again <laughs> that's age and maturity right that's what she doesn't have is age and maturity because I guess mean, what she is at that prime age look, 20 I mean, you've something. had hundreds of years of sex ain't no sex that good that keep you i mean if you go around rabbit jacking all dog on day you're gonna get tired of it tired of it at some point look when you're young she got a couple hundred years on her and inexperienced of course that's more that's the strongest feeling you probably could feel and she that's what's keeping her kind of like not from cutting his head off her locked in it's that wood yeah basically Which is not fair. I don't like that stuff. But you know, it's in the book. Like it's <laughs> it's it's a part of the story because without it, it may not be as entertaining because no one likes a character that is so rigid, you know. So Yeah, you, you need that full circle, that wholesome characters characterization. Mm-hmm. You know, where it kind of gives them um well she she is half human, so it gives more um emphasis to that side of her being able to relate to those feelings and emotions and events and things like that so yeah so it's kind of necessary to be stigmatized I guess (laughs) you know I guess it's fine I mean when you're growing and you're young it's cute it's easy sometimes (laughs) and that's the thing about this book so all right I think that this is definitely adult. Some people were labeling this as new adult and new adult is like that happy place between being a grown up and being like a teenager. You're not YA, but you're not like 30. Yeah. <laughs> like that I college think, age, you know. Um, It probably is 17 more adult. To 18 to 23, 24, 25. You know, you're young inexperienced it is more adult it's just um i think because of how the um sexual encounters escalated and her experiences even her first sexual experience that was that was uh, horrific that was absolutely horrific like yeah that was horrible no like and the thing is though the guy didn't even like do it on purpose. He got like blood. He didn't lust. know. He he blacked yeah. out and act, it went crazy, ape shit crazy on her, and no. that was horrible. Like, damn, that was your first experience. That sucks. Like, I felt so bad for her. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, that was an awful first experience. Like, ew, like I know. I'd have been trying to write that off in the on the page to take to the grave. Like, honestly, I'm <laughs> surprised she let Rain bite her on the neck after that experience she had i i think she wanted him too much not to because she wanted him before she knew knew she wanted him. i know but still that's got to trigger some memories the last time somebody got but you at did. the neck they tried to like take you out it, it did trigger her and she kept on kind of having to pull herself back and he was like you're safe oh my god <laughs> <laughs> But that's how he brought her back, and she was like, eh. "Oh my <laughs> god, take my juices." Okay, so look, <laughs> if I had to criticize one thing about this book, I think it would be 
that the author, and this is why the book is so long, she does a lot of tell not show, which I think is part of the reason why the book is so long. Like, Mm -hmm. and we could have used more action to show instead of just telling. And I know sometimes Mm -hmm. that is by design, but sometimes too much of it is not a good thing. So in my opinion, if I, if I were to criticize one thing, that would be it. Um, what would be my criticism? I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have, um, an, an, an important criticism or I let you, I, I don't know. I liked it. Like I didn't, I like it too. And you know, but the, but see, the thing is, I just feel like two things can be true. I can still look at something critically and still like it. So I don't have that critical eye yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and honestly, the slow, the beginning was a little bit slow for me, like the first six ish percent. Like I could feel the vibe initially and I knew it was was going to be good. It was just like, okay, get, get there, get there, get there. Like I said, I just read through it. Like Mm -hmm. I was through it, "Mm, but wait, yeah, I felt like I could keep going. So I had to pull back and slow down. But yeah, um, I like that it was action all through there and I didn't mind the little blood and gut spatter oh, everywhere you know, i like me some i like some I uh, stabbing like, and killing <laughs> it's great i love the stabbing and killing i i need that to counter with romance you can't have me all up in and i like the amount of romance too it wasn't a lot it wasn't overkill it wasn't too much yeah. they weren't like trying to have sex during the trials which is some books you know <laughs> some books they'd be like oh we running for our lives to stop and have sex against this wall and they keep running you know <laughs> let's stop in this corner real quick right <laughs> So they didn't do that, which I appreciate. Or I read one book. I read one book and they were on the horses on their way to the uh, to the big battle or whatever. And he's like, oh, let me get my feels. Let's let's hump on the horse. Oh, <laughs> no, that is whack. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Like, <laughs> that's awful. Like, my bad that didn't pay attention. <laughs> oh, my God. That's dreadful. At least it wasn't cringe. Like. Yeah, no. Some, some of them get real cringe. No, I think Carissa Broadbent did a good job with the sex. You know, it wasn't, it was kind of vanilla. You know, it wasn't very kinky, but it wasn't like tepid water either. I feel like it matched. Yeah. It matched what was going on in the storyline, in the um, the levels of relationships. Like it, it wasn't like overkill. It matched. It, it did match. It, it was painful. Yeah, it was tasteful. Um, I had a good time with it. I I liked it. I mean, overall, I liked it, and I'm excited to read the second one. Me too. Yeah, I'm ready. I think like, I'm gonna start really quickly though, so I can actually, because you know, I like to read several things at once. So I'm actually yeah. gonna take my time instead of like trying to rush to the finish line. I want to like pace it out a little bit. You're not gonna go out and get it, get it, get it. Get no, it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I am not. My plan is to probably read, I don't know, 25% a week or something. Like, I'll really just try to stick with that so I can enjoy it more, I, I think. think. I can't draw it out that long. I'm going to try. Like, especially especially if I'm enjoying the read. Like, it's so easy for me to sit down and just read. Like, like yesterday, my TV didn't come on at all, baby. I was highly entertained in this book. Same. I mean, I hear you, but I like to... Especially since I got I so many other things going on too. So I did take a break to play my game. Okay. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I went right back to my book. Like, mm. <laughs> but I did, I enjoyed it. I don't know if I would make it is, a, mm, I would consider this read like a slow burn. It is a they, slow it burn. It just kept going and going, and but it was steady, it was consistent. Um, it build to a good climax. So it is a slow burn and see the reason why. So the next book. All right. So the next book, it just came out in April too, but it's okay. Look now this, this is a good reason to start earlier. It is 665 oh, pages. Oh, that's not so bad. The first book was 530 pages. So it's over 120 more pages which isn't bad, but when you look at a book that is 660 p- plus pages, that thing is a chunker. It's like Sarah J. Moss books. This big. You can't see my fingers if you're not on Patreon. 
<laughs> it's a big uh-uh. <laughs> so just me I don't like the feeling of um looking at the percentage as I'm reading you know feeling yeah. the pressure of having to say oh my god 10 percent left eight percent that you know I feel I don't like that pressure <laughs> feeling so for that and that alone I'll probably start early even if I finish early I'm okay if I finish I'm early. not I'm I'm gonna do this probably the same thing because my chunker is not a chunker. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I get it. I I probably will d- divvy it up a little better, but I don't think I don't think I'll do it like over weeks and weeks. <laughs> I might because I'm and oh I can't even tell you what else I'm about to read. That's off the subject. Okay, we are gonna off the subject. We are gonna go ahead and rate this thing <laughs> because I think unless there's something specific you want to cover, I think we should just rate it and wrap it up. What do you think? I, I think we spilled all the beans on this. Yeah, we got all the high level, good, juicy parts. I think there's a lot of other things yeah. in there. Trust me, but we're not gonna talk about all of it. <laughs> we'll be on here forever. <laughs> I know. So let's rate it. I'll. Uh, why don't you go first? I rated it five stars. Ooh. I like this. That's book. great. I love it. That's great. Five stars. That's a win. I rated it four stars. I also think this is a very good rating because y- y'all know I'm stingy with the stars. I am very stingy. <laughs> so I think I'm not stingy yet. No, you will be. But I think four stars is excellent out the gate for me. And I'm looking for a home run. I'm looking for a five-star finish where I can say, everybody, if you like this, you will love this type of thing. Yes. I loved it. This was a great pick. Yay, I'm glad. And I only picked it because, you know, actually TikTok delivered on something. I saw this. Oh, yeah. I saw this on TikTok a lot of times and on BookTube. I'm like, everyone and their book mother is talking time. about this book right now. Let's do but it. It was, it was not disappointing. I'll tell you that. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the recommendations came through. People actually <laughs> did not lie. <laughs> For yeah. <once. laughs> All right. So we're going to end things there, you guys. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you are still hearing the sound of my voice, please don't forget to like and subscribe before you go so you don't miss our next episode. We'll be right here again next month to talk about the second book in the duology. And that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.